Hey guys, thanks for joining me. As you guys know, I'm a makeup artist and I think that one of the most important things that I've learned um, during my time as a makeup artist is how to perfect the face. And by that, I mean the things that you do before you put on foundation. So that's what I wanted to teach you guys today. I thought it would be something really valuable to learn because I think as a makeup artist, that's something that I'm most known for is beautiful faces, good skin, and how to just perfect that for the client because I feel like if you don't get their skin right, their foundation right, all of that, nothing that you do in the eyes is going to make up for it. So I wanted to show you guys how to prep and prime a client's face before you get on to the rest of their face, um, just to help with whatever problems they might have before you do their eyes. So here goes. The first thing I always do is that regardless of if they have anything on their face or not, even if they say they're not wearing anything, you never know. You want to wipe off everything and start afresh. One thing that you don't want to do is ask your client a million questions. You want them to feel like you are the person who knows everything. So you don't want to know if they have oily skin. You don't, you don't want to ask them if they have dry skin. You should be able to figure these things out by yourself by looking at a client's face when they're talking to you, telling them what you want. Um, at that time is the time to kind of like look at their face, kind of judge to see what you think would work best on them because you don't want them to see that you're stopping in between kind of thinking, not knowing what to do. So a few secrets are this. One, if somebody has got a lot of fine lines, wrinkles, you know their skin is probably dry because they're probably aging. Um, if they've got bigger pores, blackheads, stuff like that, they probably have skin on the oilier side. And also with really dry skin, you can tell just by the look of the skin that it's not as malleable. And you won't be able to see any shine whatsoever, you know? Somebody with normal skin has a little bit of shine here and there, but nothing crazy. So it also looks like really healthy, good skin. So for me, um, my most important thing is to prime the skin beforehand in layers. So what I first do, I wipe off whatever they have on their skin with a makeup remover wipe. And that includes any eyeliner or mascara residue they might have. And you also want to strip their skin of anything that they have beforehand, which could be you know, um, face lotions, things like that. So I wipe off everything on their face and then I go ahead and spritz their face with some Fix Plus. So this really, really helps to plump up a client's face. You have no idea how much this helps to make your skin look real, to make it look young, and to help clients, especially with dry skin. So it's a great, great product. I let that soak in for a few minutes and then I apply a moisturizer. So a few different moisturizers I carry in my kit is this one right here. This is the DDF Ultra Light Moisturizing Dew. This is for people with excessively oily skin because it's a very, very light moisturizer. For people that I think have more normal to dry skin, I'll use the Charge Water Face and Body Lotion from MAC. So you can also put this in their body if you think that if you're going to be airbrushing things like that, you want the entire canvas that you're working on to have been prepped by you. So that's the second option that I use. However, since it's for myself, I'm going to be using my Skin Perfecting Lotion by Murad. Also, make sure that you're working in layers and in between while you're waiting for things to soak in that you're working on something else. So, while I was waiting for um, the Fix Plus to soak in, I could have gone ahead and put on lip balm on the client because you want every area of their skin to be primed. Then after that, while the lotion is setting in or after it's set in, you want to go ahead and look for like problematic parts of their face. Do they have under eye bags? If they do, a good product to use is the Fast Response Eye Cream by MAC. That's what it looks like. It just comes in a little tube. So I would literally just take out a little bit. And I use brushes like this for everything that I do on clients. A synthetic brush like this. but. Lots of makeup artists prefer sponges or even their fingers. So you put on any eye cream if you think that they've got eye problems, like bags. This is a really good cream for bags. And it doesn't help with like discoloration. You're never going to have cream that's going to instantly correct color just because that's something that clients have to use over time for, to make that go away. So little things like instant gratification products, you get a lot of those. So for bags or for skin textures and stuff like that you can find a lot of products so that's one thing then because I like to use primers and everybody but now the thing is this if somebody's skin is very dry then I'm not going to use a primer because their skin will more than likely hold the products that you're putting on them anyway so I'll skip that if the person's skin is dry if not then I like to use the skin base massage by MAC right here it has no SPF in it so therefore, it's a good product for cameras. You want to be careful that you're using everything that's going to be camera friendly. 
So that's what I would put on to a client with any other type of skin. However, for myself, I'm going to use the Face Protect Protection Massage SPF 50 because as you guys know, I've got really oily skin and I have nowhere to go today, so I don't really care if it's not going to photograph well. I'm just going to rub that in really well. Okay, so after moisturizing and priming and letting that all soak in, the next thing you want to do is look for the skin's imperfections that somebody might have. If, for example, men usually have really shiny foreheads or if they're bald, then you know how that bald head has a lot of shine. So one way to get rid of that, or even people with oily skin sometimes, even if they don't have like major pores or problems on their skin, they might just have like a lot of shine. So a good product for that is the Matte Cream by MAC. You can take this and literally just dab this on with a sponge and it like takes away all the shine. It is all silicone though, so make sure that you confirm with your client they're not allergic to silicone because that's a product that a lot of people are allergic to. Then for me, what I like to use is a Skin Refined uh, Zone Treatment. This is a great thing for people who've got big pores anywhere on their skin. And especially on the nose area, it also helps a little bit with oiliness. So I'm going to take some of that and just pat that. Don't rub it, just pat it into the areas that are kind of problematic. What this does is that it makes the size of your pores look like they have shrunk. Of course, we all know that shrinking pores is not really possible, but it gives you the look of the fact that it has shrunk. So, it also instantly takes away some shine, as you guys probably noticed. So it's a great thing to use for enlarged pores. And also, sometimes enlarged pores look like blackheads, even though it's not blackheads. Like that's what my nose sometimes looks like. So. I like this for that especially because it really takes away that look. Then for people with lines on their face, like older skin again has that. Some younger people have smile lines also. We have a line filler base for MAC. So I'm going to also use that in this line right here that I have. This stuff is so potent. You can literally like, it's just amazing. Like it's really thick. Yes, like that's what it looks like. It's super, super thick. But I would just take that with my ring finger and apply it directly onto the line. And it literally closes up that gap. And you'll see it. Try it on your knuckles or something because it really, really, really works. It also helps to not get foundation stuck in between those lines. I know that that always happens to me because on a daily basis I don't do this. But for like special occasions and stuff, I will do all these steps. And there you go. And then, while I'm letting all of that soak in, I would go ahead and start with the eyes. I would put on concealer on my eyes or foundation to kind of neutralize the color and then go from there. But this is how I would prep and prime a client's face before you start their makeup. And at the end of all their makeup, if it's not airbrush makeup, I would go ahead and spray it down again with some Fix Plus to take away that powdery look that everybody tends to get. Because as a makeup artist, you are using quite a bit of product and you are trying to make sure that nothing goes wrong. So... I do use a lot of powder in my clients to make sure nothing goes wrong, but I set it with this, and then after that, all the powder tends to look like liquid again and look more natural and normal. So I hope this helped you guys, and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye.